Hey guys, happy Sunday. This is Lauren Wandal, AKA The Fit Law. I'm really excited because I am doing Sunday meal prep. Um, I guess I'm excited because that means that we're gonna be prepared for the next week. And I'm gonna be very honest, meal prep is not something that I've been doing regularly. Um, with paleo, I cook a lot of stuff like, I don't wanna say to order, but yeah, kind of to order. I just do um, our nightly meals. I don't really plan them ahead of time. I just kind of throw whatever together. Um, I'm kind of a throw it together and, and do whatever we have in the fridge kind of person. Um, but honestly, that makes it very easy for us to make excuses and you know do something quick if we have to. We usually try to keep it clean, but you know stuff happens. So this week, um, I am starting a new challenge group tomorrow, uh, and it's all based around nutrition, so I really wanted to go live for the people in my group and for you guys and um, show you what I'm doing for my meal prep. So I don't have any really rhyme or reason to what's going on. I literally have some stuff prepped, and what I'm gonna do is just show you exactly how I put it all together um, and why I make these specific staples, because there is stuff that I'm still gonna be making throughout the week for us to eat, but these are kind of my big staples to get us through. Uh, my husband takes his lunch to work every single day, and I Obviously, I'm here and I want to have stuff to eat, so these are kind of our big basics. I have cut a few things up, um, and so just to make it go a little bit quicker, but I'm just going to show you guys kind of step by step what I'm doing. And I'm going to start with the stuff that takes the longest so I can pop them in the oven. So as you guys know, me and my husband are, uh, I would say about 80, 20 paleo. Um, so our carbs for the week are always potatoes. So I went to Trader Joe's and I found these things that I, my kids thought were so cute. They're teeny tiny potatoes um, and they're adorable and you can roast them whole and so I'm really really excited because I know that these are going to be delicious so all I did is I washed them and I put them on a stone so um, for these I'm going to keep it very 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 simple I am just going to do olive oil salt pepper and then I bought some fresh dill that I'm going to chop up and put on top of it these are going to probably take about 40 minutes so I'm going to post I'm going to put these in now uh, so literally you're just going to drizzle them with olive oil I would say maybe about a tablespoon uh, a little bit more depending on how many you have we're going to do some salt and you can kind of play around with these. Like I've done them a little bit spicier with like some cumin or uh, paprika or you know some other stuff on them too. Um, it's kind of whatever you like. But this is kind of my go-to recipe with these. Is I really just like the dill. It's been definitely a favorite of mine and my husband's. So that's just black pepper. And I'm gonna move these for a second. I'll be kind of shifting stuff around because trying to make sure that I have everything in the shot. <clears throat> All right, so I have some dill. I'm just gonna top, chop quite a bit of this because I'm actually gonna do some other stuff with these herbs. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I always buy these containers of herbs and I need like this much out of it and the rest of it just goes to waste. So what I'm also gonna be doing is um, freezing, and there's my oven, I have it preheated to 425. I have these little uh, freezer trays and what I'm gonna be doing is using the chopped up herbs and putting them in here and covering them with olive oil and freezing them. And it's a really great way to kind of flavor some of your dishes throughout the week. Uh, and you know, you can take them out after they're frozen and stick them in bags and label them so that you know which herbs are in what. Um, but it's a really good way to kind of add some flavor to stuff. You throw it in a pan and you already have flavored olive oil. Uh, you can do this with like roasted garlic too, but I'm gonna be doing some dill and some chives. Those are gonna be my uh, two flavors that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do three of each. So I'm actually gonna be cutting up a couple extra uh, so I can do that. So for dill, you just kinda like pull it off the stem. I have a trash bowl over here too, so that's why I literally just use it for trash. Um, so you just kinda pull it off the stem. You just don't want the big stem. They're just kind of, they don't taste that great, so. Uh, so anyway, we are going to be doing potatoes. That's kind of my first thing just because they take the longest. Other things on the menu. I am going to make some burgers. I had a couple pounds of ground beef in the freezer that I wanted to use up because they've been in there for a little bit. So I was like, eh, might as well get some use out of these. I am weird about keeping stuff in the freezer for too long. I, I don't know. I just try to get, I try to go through, um, our meat pretty quickly. I would rather eat it, you know, obviously sooner than later because I don't like the freezer burn as my is a big turnoff for me and I don't like to eat food that's been freezer burned. I think growing up my mom used to leave stuff in the fridge. She used to freeze everything. She froze cheese, milk, like it was everything. So I don't really do that. I try to um, do like the basics but I try to use my stuff pretty quickly. Um, so I have quite a bit of dill here. 
And when you're chopping herbs, all you have to do is just kind of bunch them up into a really, really tight ball, and it makes them easier to chop. Okay. See, I definitely do not need this much. I would say I need about a tablespoon. Eh, no, I lied. We're going to use it all. <laughs> just kidding. Plants change, you know. Uh, and then if you're cooking with me, you got to be able to get messy a little bit. So just, you know, toss them with your hands. Get in there. Don't be shy. You can always wash them. I know some people that are big on, like, not getting their hands dirty when they cook. I think there's two kinds of cooks. There's people that either do everything with their hands or they do nothing with their hands, right? So it's one or the other. So let me rinse these really quick. Okay, uh, so those are good to go. So as you can see, they just look really good, right? Just really simple. And I will roast these. These are gonna go on the bottom rack. And now we're going to kind of move on. I'm actually going to just continue to chop up the dill since it's already on my cutting board. I'm going to do a little bit more of that and then I'll freeze, you know, as we go. Might as well just do the herbs while I have them out and then kind of go from there. So next thing, um, while I'm doing this, I'll kind of tell you about what, I, what the other things are that we're doing. So I'm going to be doing peppers and onions on my grill pan, which you see behind me on my stove. These are definitely a favorite of my husband's and mine. We eat these with basically everything. And I have the recipe posted on my page. I did it a few, I wanna say it was like last week I posted it. Uh, this is definitely the best, it's the best vegetables. I'm sorry, it just is. And maybe I'm being a little, bi uh, I have like a little biased opinion, but we eat them on everything. I will eat them on salads, you can eat them on tacos, you can eat them um, just as a side, like with chicken or whatever. You know, you don't need a specific thing. Um, I think my husband just takes them to work a lot just to eat on the side, don't you? The peppers and onions? Yeah, we just do them as like a side for pretty much everything. You can eat them with a spoon by themselves, like whatever you want, they're really, really good. I actually stole this recipe from Chipotle. Uh, so the recipe is a copycat recipe from Chipotle and that's why I think I love it so much because Chipotle is like my favorite place on earth. Um, so that is gonna be one of the other things we're making. Like I said, I'm gonna be making some burgers. I'm gonna do a little bit of onion in those, some chives. Um, and some different spices and we'll make a couple burger patties. I have a bunch of chicken breasts that I'm just gonna season really quickly and um, cook up and then I'll probably shred those actually. I don't know why, but I like shredded chicken better than just having chicken breasts. I feel like I eat it a lot faster because I can use it in more things. You know, you can throw it in a wrap if you wanted to bring it in a wrap. Um, not that we've been really eating them, but uh, you know, you can throw it on a salad or eat it on the side, you know, mix it with a sauce or whatever. So. Um, I like to shred our chicken. Okay, so I'm going to chop all these up, and then I'm going to show you guys how I make these ice cubes really quick. These flavor cubes is what I should call them because they have – I've been meaning to do this all year too, and I haven't done it. I had some herbs that were growing outside, and I totally dropped the ball, and now they're all dead. And so I bought some, and I'm going to – do these because this is what's gr a great idea so for those of you who do a lot of herbs it's a really great idea with your leftovers so if you have extras okay so I just chopped those up and I have two of these trays so I'm just gonna put a little bit in each maybe about a half a tablespoon in each of them and I think yeah I'm gonna do all six and then I'll do six of the chives too because I have the trays so I might as well Dried herbs are great, but fresh herbs, you have to use a lot less. So that's what I like about them is I feel like with dried herbs, I go through them so much faster because they just aren't as flavorful, you know? So, okay. Again, I'm going to rinse my hands just really quick. Okay, so these are really simple. You don't have to put anything else in but the herbs, and then you're just going to cover the top of olive oil. So you can just use regular olive oil, nothing fancy. Just stick them up so they're at the top. And then mine are silicone so that you can pop them out really easily. You probably could use a normal, just like ice cube tray too, 
but um, these ones are specifically made for stuff like this. The other thing that's great in these, a couple different ideas, is like you could puree bananas and use them like ice cubes. I know some people use just frozen bananas, but uh, these blend up a little better than frozen bananas because they're already pureed. You can also do berries too, again, mix them up and use them in smoothies. Or the other big one that I love is just uh, chicken stock. So you can do chicken stock or beef stock that you've made and freeze them in individual ice cubes and use them for stuff and just throw them in and uh, be done. So I'm gonna stick these in the freezer a little bit later uh, because I have a pull out and I have to put them in the one downstairs so that they can sit flat. Um, let me clean off my cutting board two seconds. Okay, good to go. Always keep a towel nearby when you're prepping. And make sure your dishes are done before you meal prep too because you're gonna have dishes afterwards. It's just how it goes. Okay, so vegetables. Let's finish those up. And then we'll throw these on the grill pan. So I have cut up, I think three bell peppers in here. Um, and then I have two red onions. I'm gonna sh show you how I sliced up uh, the onions and then I'm gonna show you how to cut a bell pepper because this is something that I do on a lot of my cooking feeds because a lot of people do not know the proper way to cut a bell pepper. A lot of you have been taught that you wanna cut the top off like this. You just cut the top off, right? That's not how you're supposed to do it. You're wasting way too much food. Don't do it ever again. Get off my finger. So I'm gonna teach you guys the proper way to do it. So you see the pepper has, they always have little quadrants, right? So this one has three, one, two, three. There's this little crease in between them. You're gonna cut down in each of them, okay? So you just put your knife in there and you cut straight down to the cutting board. Boom, you're gonna do that in each quadrant. Two, three. So depending on the pepper, you'll have different cuts, obviously, depending on how many different little quadrants there are. I don't know why I just got rid of my trash bowl when I need it. And then I'm gonna show you how easy this is. You're literally gonna pop it, you're gonna pull it towards you. So you stick your finger and you pull it, okay? And you pull it and then you're left with one that has all the seeds on it. So go over the trash can or a bowl, turn it upside down, and pull the seeds out. You've just gotten rid of all the seeds, and they're not everywhere. Because when you cut the top off, right, the seeds literally go everywhere. And they get all in your stuff, and, you know, that's no fun. And then this white pithy part that's left over, you can literally pull it out with your fingers. Or if you're good with your knife, you can pull that out too. You can just kind of slice it out um, because it's a little bit bitter. But you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck this way. You're not going to waste as much food. You know, and I'm all about saving money. So that is how they teach you how to do it in culinary school, just so you know. Okay, so I already did the rest. So I actually have four peppers that are cut up, um, but I'm just going to slice these. And then when you're slicing a pepper, make sure that the skin side is down because it's just easier for your knife to slip if it's, if it's not. And uh, we want you to have all 10 of your fingers. So I'm not going to lie, definitely guilty of cutting myself. You know what's funny though is when I cut myself when I'm cooking, it's never while I'm doing anything important. Like I'm never like butchering a chicken or doing anything crazy. It's like when I'm picking a knife up or, you know, just <laughs> doing something like cutting it with a cheese grater. Like I never cut myself doing anything like chopping anything normal. So that's your peppers. And then for onions, uh, I'm going to show you how to dice it and slice it. So I already peeled this. Just to peel an onion, obviously you cut off both sides, slit down and peel around the first layer. So this is um, just a white onion. I'm gonna cut it in half. Half of it we're gonna dice and put in our um, burgers and then the other half I'm gonna slice in rainbows. So when you're rainbow slicing, uh, the, I mean, it's pretty simple. You're just gonna try to keep it pretty even because you want them all to cook at the same rate. So do your best to keep the slices even. It just takes practice. You know, don't, don't rush it. Knife skills just takes time. So I actually have a lot of red onion in here, but I had a yellow onion left, so I figured I'd use it. Now, for dicing an onion, you are going to do this. Um, I'm going to teach you how to do this the proper way also, because a lot of people are taught they cut the rainbows and then they dice the rainbows. What's wrong with that is that you're going to get uneven pieces, and that's why when you're cooking your food, you have raw onion in parts of it, and then you have cooked onion in the other parts, right? No bueno. We don't like that. So we're going to do this a different way. So you're going to take your hand flat. And we're not doing this because I don't want you to cut your fingers off. Like I said, we like having 10 fingers. So flat on the top, you're going to make three incisions to the back of the onion. You're going to write an imaginary line. See how my knife stopped right here? There's an imaginary line right here. You're going to do that three times. So one at the bottom, one in the middle, 
and one at the top. You are not cutting all the way through. So now we're gonna flip it and we're gonna cut in, like straight down, right? So we went horizontal, now we're gonna go vertical. Same thing, you're gonna do as many slices as you want. So depending on how many slices you do will change the, uh, the size of the dices, okay? So I just did that. So now we've cut in, we've cut down, now we're gonna cut across, just like you did with the rainbows. So what's gonna happen now is all of these dices are gonna come out exactly the same. Right, and what's great about this is again, when I like when I'm putting them in burgers, now they're all gonna cook evenly. So all of the onions are gonna be the same and no one's gonna get like a big bite of raw onion because that's disgusting and nobody likes that. So I have half a white onion just diced and I have a pound of ground beef. So I'm gonna throw this in here and we'll mix all this up later. But that was my last onion. So <clears throat> the burgers I'm not actually gonna cook tonight I'm just gonna prep them so that we have them ready for this week. So in here, onions, peppers, we're gonna do some garlic, and then I'm gonna do spices, and we'll throw them on the grill. So this grill pan takes a minute to heat up, so I'm gonna throw some olive oil on it and turn on my burners really quick. You don't need a ton. So we turn on the front and the back. A little bit more. Okay. All right, we're gonna do some garlic. Now you can chop your garlic by hand, but that's a total pain in the ass. So I'm gonna use a garlic press because it's a whole lot faster. <laughs> so um, this one's Pampered Chef. I think you can get them other places too, Bed Bath & Beyond, all that good stuff. I'm gonna do uh, about five cloves. See, look, and then the peel just comes right out. I did that with the peel on. How awesome is that? So I just shove a couple cloves in there. Oops. Shove a couple cloves in there and squeeze. Boom, baby, garlic. And it's completely, it's not even minced, it's like pulverized, right? And then my peel just comes right out. So that was really uh, like kind of small, so we're gonna do a couple more. So I have a new one that I bought. Pull some of these out. I don't know, should we throw some garlic in the burgers too? What do you guys think? Maybe a little. Okay, we're gonna do another, this one's pretty big. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do these two. I like garlic, so roasted garlic is like one of my favorite things of all time. Me and my husband met at this Persian restaurant and uh, they did kebabs. And with the kebabs, you always got fire roasted. It was like over an open fire grill. They did roasted tomatoes, onions, peppers, and garlic and the garlic you can just eat it like candy. It's ridiculously good. He's over there laughing at me because he knows what I'm talking about. It's so good. You can literally just eat it on the side of your food. Okay, so that's done. Now I am gonna put a little bit of olive oil on here. It's not necessarily uh, needed. I'm just doing it honestly just so I can mix it with the spices and they stick a little bit better. So I'm talking like a little bit, like we're just trying to like lubricate a little bit here, like maybe a half cup like a teaspoon-ish. So here are the spices for the copycat recipe from Chipotle. It's salt, that garlic that I just showed you, and you can use any kind of peppers and onions. Um, they kind of switch between red and white. I usually use white, but the red ones look really pretty. Black pepper. Season a lot, because there's a lot in here. in here. I had four peppers, three onions. So it's quite a bit. And then, where did it go? Oh, and then easy peasy dried oregano. That's it, that's it. It, it is so ridiculously good. I'd say maybe about a tablespoon of that. What did I say? What are our best tools? Hands, right? So I'm gonna mix these up and then we're gonna throw these on the grill and then we'll move on to our chicken, get that in the oven. Um, I'm gonna boil some eggs here behind me. And here's the thing about this, guys, is like we're gonna probably eat some of this for dinner anyway. Um, a lot of my food prep that I do is with, like I, I use my, I do a lot of my food prep during the week while we're cooking, I just make extra, right? So that's a lot of the times what I'm doing. Okay, so we're gonna add these to the grill. Ready for the sizzle? Oh yeah. Okay.
Okay. We literally have the most sensitive fire alarms you've ever seen in your life. So even when I'm cooking pretty much anything inside, um, they'll go off. So if my fire alarm goes off, that's why. I swear I'm a good cook. We just have really sensitive ones. Okay, so those are on the grill. I'm going to throw this chicken in. And then we will move on. So chicken, nothing crazy. I buy these really thin chicken breasts from my butcher. Like when I say that they're thin, I mean like they're really, really thin. But I like them because they cook so quickly. Um, I'm not gonna lie, we keep these super simple. We use the Chef's Bulvari Bulvarian Gold Pork and Poultry Seasoning. This shit is gold. It is so good. You think I can turn this off? It's really loud. So this is what it looks like. Ridiculous. It's so good. So all I'm going to do, honestly, is just throw these in with the potatoes. So I'm going to stick these on a pan. You can grill these too if you want. You know, whatever, whatever you have access to, um, these will pretty much cook the same anywhere. So they're really, really thin. So they'll cook probably... I'd say they take about, about 15 minutes. They're really, really fast. Okay. And then I just kind of like very liberally season this. And this is like all natural organic seasoning. It's really good. I'll read the ingredients for you. I'm pretty sure it's like garlic, salt. I wanna say that there's some, there's gotta be like some cumin or something in here. Okay, let's see. It's really, really good. Salt, pem paprika, caraway seeds, sage, garlic, and pepper. Easy. Done? We're going to throw those in the oven. Okay. Good to go with that. Now let's move on. Let me clean up here a little bit. Okay. All right, so burgers are gonna come up, but the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm, I told you. And now my husband will run up and turn it off. Every single time, every time. Do you guys see smoke? There's no smoke. All right, eggs, back to it. These um, are just farm fresh eggs that we got. I have eight in here. I'm gonna teach you guys how to boil these. Again, I feel like this is such a simple thing, but a lot of people don't know how to do it. So make sure that they have room, but you're gonna start these in cold water. Okay, cold water. So I'm gonna fill it up. I don't understand. Is this their smoke? Yeah. He goes, he goes, they're smell detectors. Um, okay, so all I did is cover these with water. I didn't do anything else. I'm going to stick these on the stove. I'm going to grab the lid, which is not this one. Where's the lid? Brandon? Never mind. Okay. I'm going to turn those on. Now, with hard-boiled eggs, this is the easiest way to do them. You're gonna stick them in cold water, bring it to a boil, and then as soon as it starts boiling, there it goes again. I swear guys, it's like crazy. It's clockwork. Every single time, it's crazy. Anyway, um, I don't get it. If anybody out there is like an electrician and knows how to turn these off, because they're all interconnected, so we don't know why it does that. <laughs> Anyway, um, you're going to bring it to a boil, and then as soon as it starts boiling, you're going to cut off the heat. Just completely turn it off. Keep the lid on, but completely turn off the heat, and then you just let them sit for 10 minutes, and you have perfect hard-boiled eggs every single time. It's as easy as that. Okay, because I used to, when I was little, I would, like, boil the water, like, throw the eggs in there, and just hope that they didn't crack. Don't do that. All right, so while we're waiting for that to come, so sensitive. Your alarms must be related. It never fails. Yeah. They're connected. No, no, no. They're saying, yeah, they're... Huh? Everybody's just saying they're so sensitive. Yeah, no, it's... They'll go off again. They'll be, oh, yeah, like maybe three or four times I think a night. fourth day in a row, 
Yeah, I think this is like the fourth or fifth day in a row. It's ridiculous. I think it's because right behind here we have stairs and like all of the stuff travels up the stairs and then there's a fire alarm right at the top. So it all collects there. It's crazy. Oh, yours do the same thing. I've never had that problem. Your smoke alarms must be too close to the stove. Yeah, the only one that we have that's too close is upstairs. So we need like a door there or something to block the smoke. It's ridiculous. Um, I mean, there are some times that I do like have a lot of smoke coming out of here because, you know, I try to grill inside or something, but whatever. I know, it just like holds all the smoke there. There's two. You hear it beep? He's just standing there waiting for it to go off. Just take it off the wall. Okay, anyway. So we're going to move on to burgers. So I have, remember, a pound of ground beef and I have half an onion in here. I'm going to season these pretty simply. I'm going to do some chives because, again, I have them and I want to do that, um, I want to do that, them frozen too. Like I want to do those olive oil cubes. So we're going to do some chives. I'm going to cut off the ends of these because they don't look so great, which is kind of sad because I just got these today. What the heck, Trader Joe's? All right. Just dice these up. Yeah, if you guys know an electrician that knows what the hell is going on, let me know. Because this has been something that, like, has... This is, like, the only thing I don't like about our house. Seriously. Um, okay, so I have maybe two tablespoons. Throw those in there. black pepper, salt, and then I'm going to put garlic powder in this too because I don't think I'm actually going to put raw garlic because I already have raw onion. So I kind of want the garlic flavor without, you know, like the raw garlic taste. I even have the fan on. That's how hard it is to do this. Yeah, it's crazy. Okay, what's awesome about these peppers though is that when you do them on this grill pan, they get like charred like that, and it's so good. This is, you're, <laughs> he's just gonna stay up there. Okay, so we have chives and then a garlic powder, that's right. And you can put whatever you want in this, guys. Like, I'm not... As you can tell, I don't measure very much. Salt. Okay. So, that's it. That's all I put in there. And then I'm going to mix it up and form some patties. Um, now, here's kind of what I've got going on. So, all together, I have vegetables in the oven. I actually made some vegetables yesterday. That's why I'm not making more. Because what I would usually do is another set. Like, I'd roast some cauliflower or I would um, make some roasted zucchini or something like that. But I made two heads of roasted cauliflower yesterday, so um, I don't really need any more vegetables. I have an entire container in there full, so that's why I'm only doing peppers and onions. So this will probably last us, I would say, about, about half of the week. Um, we usually actually go through food rather quickly, just because, you know, my husband eats a lot and I'm home and I eat a lot. So... And we don't eat out, like, we rarely eat out. We actually did today, but we rarely eat out during the week. So, um, we have the burgers, which, <laughs> he's just standing at the top of the stairs, just pushing the button every time it happens. I don't know. Anyway, we, um, we rarely eat out. So, what we will have is, like, we'll have burgers that we can actually make tomorrow. Um, I will have the chicken, which we can use for leftovers, and then we have actually some leftover pork in there, too. So I usually have three of each. I try to get three proteins, uh, usually two starches because we only eat potatoes and sweet potatoes, so I usually try to cook both of those. Uh, three, three vegetables, and then um, healthy fats for that. I usually just have nuts, which obviously we always have in the pantry. So I'm going to have burgers, chicken, peppers and onions, and I'm going to have another protein, which is... Why are these on medium? Is these... Hard-boiled eggs, because hard-boiled eggs are amazeballs. 
Somebody said their dog is losing their mind. Is losing their mind because it keeps going off. Sorry. Okay, so like I said, use your hands, but I'm actually not gonna for the raw meat just because my nails are long and raw meat gets stuck underneath them, and that's really gross. So this is the one thing that I'm gonna actually use a spoon for. I'll form them with it, but like when it comes to yeah, you know what? I hate using spoons. It does not work as well. This is the one sacrifice that I had to make when I started getting acrylic nails is that my cooking suffered because I can't do as much with my hands. Or if I can, my nails are just dirty all the time. You can wash them, but like sometimes the stuff just gets really far down there. Okay. And then these will just be good to go, you know? So then you can, you can use these as meatballs if you wanted to. Let's flip these. It's real life, people. I don't know what to do. Every damn night. I swear to God. Like, ridiculous. Alright, well, I'm just gonna turn these off and hopefully that'll help. I don't know. I don't know. I swear I know what I'm doing. I'm not setting a fire alarm off. make these other olive oil cubes. Somebody said they use latex gloves with their nails. That's a really good idea. But honestly, I would never do that. I just would never remember to ever put them on. I don't understand what's triggering them. So same thing that I did with the other ones. Me and my husband both said, we were like, if we have a fire and our fire alarms don't go off, like that would be, that would be our luck, right? So for these, what do I use these with? Um, I saw somebody ask that. I will use these with like sauteed vegetables. So if I have like some stuff that I just want to give some fresh herbs to, right? So like if I'm doing peppers and onions, but I'm sauteing them on the stove instead of um, grilling them or doing other stuff with them, I will just throw these in a pan and let it melt and then um, toss everything in it. So it's just a really good way to kind of add like the fresh herb flavor without, it's just better. It's just better than dried herbs. That's all I have to say. Okay. Fill these with olive oil. Boom, boom, boom. So I have one of chives. I'm about to be out of olive oil. Last one. Okay, our eggs are boiling, so I'm going to cut those off. Ten minutes. Keep the lid on. I cut it off, so it's going to stop boiling, obviously, but it's just going to sit there for 10 minutes. Perfect hard boiled eggs. Easy peasy. Um, these trays are from Pampered Chef. If you guys have ever watched any of my live cooking feeds, you know that Pampered Chef and me are, like, tight. All right, so I think that's all I have to cut. Pretty sure. Yeah, like 100% sure. All right. Okay, so we're gonna throw some of this stuff back in the fridge. I bet when I open the oven, it's gonna do it again. Bet your money. For these potatoes. these you literally just poke them with a fork oh my gosh Brandon I've never bought these before those look outrageous if you didn't know potatoes are probably our most favorite thing look at these oh they look so good 
Okay. Every meal. Every meal. And onions. All right, so these are done. I can, I can hear it screaming. It's mocking I know. Me. I know. It's mocking us. It's peeping. So now all I do with this food when I'm done cooking it is I will um, use, I have reusable glass Tupperware containers. I highly recommend if you're food prepping using these because they wash and they're so freaking easy. Like they, I stick these in the dishwasher and they don't get gross like Tupperware. Um, they're a little bit of an investment. I got mine for my wedding, but uh, they're so worth it. I want to say that probably our entire set, we actually ended up buying another set of them because we use them so often, but these are amazing. So I'll just put these, put stuff in here. I set the lid underneath and I let it cool because you don't want to put hot food right into um, the the fridge because that what that's going to do is it'll pull it down to that temperature danger zone where it's not too hot not not cold enough and um, it's not a good place it will start to form bacteria and you don't want to do that so let it cool and then stick it in the fridge so I'll do that with the peppers I'm gonna do that right now And these peppers work just as well in the oven. Like you can do the exact same recipe, but in the oven, uh, and they're amazing. Oh, these are so good. They're like candy, I swear. And you can see they get like a little chard on the top. They're so good. I could not even tell you. Cooked onions are like my favorite thing ever. All right. Get the rest of this off there. I love my house. I think I just need a commercial grade kitchen with like a hood fan. Right, babe? Yeah, I need a wolf. <laughs> Peppers are done. So that's done. Um, now I'm gonna form these burger patties and show you how I'm storing these. So like I said, you could cook these if you wanted and store them the same way, like just in a Tupperware container, but I'm not gonna do that uh, because I don't want to. Honestly, I just don't want to. This thing is like at the end of its life. Hello. What, what is this craziness? Oh my goodness. Okay. Um. All right. So I'm going to take about what I want to form a patty. And I'm going to form a patty. Now, when I store these, I put them in the fridge. So if you're going to do these uncooked in the fridge, you want to keep them in the fridge for no more than like three, I would say cook them within like two to three days at the most. Uh, this ground beef was thawed. So if it's fresh ground beef, it'll last a little longer. Thawed meat, you want to try to use like pretty quickly. So look how, look how awesome those look. And then before you put them on the grill, make sure you season them um, a little bit more. I did salt and pepper in here, but just season your meat people. Uh, so there's one. This should make I would say about four so you know it's a, obviously it's a pound of ground beef so it'll be four quarter pound burgers which is a good amount right good amount and then what I do is I do mine in freezer paper and this is how I store them you can also do them in saran wrap but um, I feel like freezer paper just works a little bit better for me um, and all I do is I just do them like this and I fold this over and kind of like press them down a little bit. And then I'll just stack them, kind of wrap them up like little presents. And then I'll stack them in uh, this Ziploc bag. Come on. Do you hear the fire alarms just like beeping up there? Just waiting. They're waiting, people. And then I'll just store these in my fridge like this. Again, you don't have to wrap them. This is just how I do it. 
however you want to do it is totally fine. But this is also a good way that like, so tomorrow we decide that we don't want burgers, then they're already set so that I can throw them in the freezer. And that's why I like putting them in freezer paper like this, because worst case scenario, I end up refreezing them. Not the end of the world. But um, again, <laughs> like if I was using fresh ground beef, it'd probably be a little different, but I'm not. Uh, and I don't like to refreeze meat that I've already thought out, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're almost done here, people, I promise. How much time do our eggs have? Three minutes. Okay. Oh, you know what? This might have been, this is a little bit more than a pound, I think. So we're actually gonna have an extra burger. I don't really know how much it was. I buy big things of ground beef and then I um, separate them out into smaller bags myself. So I usually get them around a pound, but sometimes it's a little bit more. By the way, guys, to save money on food, shop at Costco. Like shop at places that you can get stuff in bulk and freeze it, freeze your meat. One of the things that I do, um, one more one of the things that I do is I keep a bucket in my fridge it's literally a bucket and all of my meat goes in here that we're gonna use so like these uh, chicken thighs were frozen this is like my thawed meat container so all of the meat is like this it's contained and it's in my fridge and it gives place a place to um, thaw safely without back like without contaminating the other food in your fridge so for those of you who don't know how to like thaw out meat, like I, you can do it in the sink, but if you know what you're gonna eat the next day, throw it in the fridge and let it thaw overnight. All right guys, last one. And then I will wrap up here with these eggs. Burgers for the win. You can put whatever you want in these and you don't have to do them with ground beef if you don't want. You could do ground turkey, ground chicken, whatever you want. Okay guys, that's pretty much my meal prep. Um, these eggs are almost done. Now when I'm finishing the eggs, all I'm gonna do is I'm going to stick them in the sink and I'm gonna run cold water over them. I'm not gonna dump out the water that's in there. I don't wanna risk you know, all the eggs falling out into the sink. So what I do is I just run cold water in there and let the hot water run out until the water obviously is all cold. And then I let the eggs sit for about two to three minutes before I peel them. You can also let them sit for longer if you want, but you definitely wanna shock them and get them a little bit colder so they don't continue to cook. So that's my other thing, and then I will leave those. Um, I, I peel mine. You can leave them unpeeled if you don't want. If you don't, you know, want to peel them and go through the hassle of that. But I leave them uh, unpeeled, and I put them in Ziploc bags with two each because two is a serving for us. So that's kind of what I do for that. So in this video, obviously, we made some peppers and onions. We did some burgers. We have chicken in there. We did um, some hard-boiled eggs. We did potatoes. We got a whole bunch of prep done. This is one of those things that it just takes a little bit of time. Once you're done, that means you're prepared for um, the next couple days. You know, if you have to do this midweek, it's really not the end of the world. Because as you can see, I did pretty much all of that prep while I was on my live feed with you, uh, which hasn't been very long. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and you got some information out of it. I'm gonna get my eggs all set and I will talk to you guys later. If you are interested in joining my next challenge group, please pop an I'm interested below or shoot me a message or an email at thefitlaw at gmail.com. If you like my live feeds and you love to see me cook, then please subscribe to my live videos or go check out my YouTube channel, which is just youtube.com backslash thefitlaw. And I will talk to you guys later. I'm so excited that you jumped on with me. Uh, love you guys and I'll talk to you later.